Hello traders, welcome to FreeFX. Today is Monday the 9th of November 2015 and we start today by looking at uh, what is my chief pair which is the British Pound New Zealand Dollar. In front of us today we have the daily chart and what I'd like really to talk about today is what has been happening briefly and how that can guide us to go forward to the end of the year. Two things to bear in mind, we are coming to a period of extreme importance for the entire 2015 uh, trading year and also going forward to 2016. So what we are looking for essentially is guidance and direction and actual uh, acting on previous four guidance from the Federal Reserve Bank. This is going to be the month that really decides what will give traders uh, in terms of direction for next year. So what do we have in the month of November? In the month of November we don't, we don't really have a lot in terms of the theme which has been preoccupying many traders which is what the Federal Reserve Bank of America will do. So what we have at the moment is the waiting game begins. We have had the, um, we've had already in fact the fantastic uh, North Farm payrolls number that came out on Friday and that really gave traders the confidence in the US dollar which went up to the uh, 12,200 and, and that really made it possible for people to imagine that the rate that rise in December is now a possibility. So without that really it would have been very difficult to say what, um, what confidence they might have had in the Federal Reserve doing that. So we have this uh, fantastic opportunity coming up in December. What we don't know obviously is how and how soon we can start planning for that because what we don't have at the moment is a clear indication that there is nothing else really disrupting the markets between now and then because the geopolitical order of things is always beyond our uh, comprehension at times and certainly as trading goes in Forex, which is the free flow of money from different countries. And we do certainly have uh, something that I'm going to show you very quickly. Okay, so the calendar is the following. I'll bring it up on this side. You can see all of the banks, the central banks. So in December, right at the end, we had the Federal Reserve on the 16th. Okay, and we have other banks close by. The Bank of England on the 10th of December and we also have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand on the 10th of December. Okay, So within about a week of each other we have these three banks um, and their central rate decision and that really affects our trading in terms of this pair, the pound, New Zealand dollar. Now we know that the Bank of England is not intent on raising rates this year based on last week's comments from Mark Carney and really preoccupations on um, global headwinds from China, uh, commodity prices, that's been the theme really for the Federal Reserve Bank as well. But we know certainly that the Federal Bank of Reserve, in spite of the similar issues that affect the Bank of England's uh, rhetoric, are certainly slightly more ahead in the game in terms of uh, moving forward to the first rate rise in many years. Looking at the uh, unemployment rate of the United Kingdom, we can see that we are at 5.4 and we know as well that the unemployment rate for the United States is also at uh, a similar level at 5%. So you can see the sliding scale this year from January has been al almost copycat for the two economies. And yet, um, when you look at the, the target that was uh, certainly in 2014 uh, for the uh, United States Federal Reserve Bank and for the Bank of England, which was to get uh, the unemployment rate below a certain point, that has happened, but they're still not convinced that they are actually there yet. And one of the main issues has been inflation, which has not reached the 2% 2 uh, 2 target. So the Evans rule for the United States was that 7% uh, unemployment rate was the, the target, so anything below it would be 
uh, the, this the point really where the interest rate could be raised and the idea either that or taking the inflation up to the two point uh, two percent point so obviously one of them has happened but the inflation uh, situation is still quite quite dismal so we don't have a clear um, trigger for raising rates now or in fact yesterday uh, so that's still something that the Federal Reserve cannot change they can make the rhetoric more hawkish and uh, and try to really rally the markets behind them uh, to prepare the markets to avoid uh, a sort of waterfall effect of sell-offs and equities disaster however these are really big themes and we only have really uh, a few minutes to finish our video so let's go back to the issue of what the next month and a half of trading has in store okay so we're on the 9th of November and we've had non-farm payrolls we've had a Bank of England rate decision um, and we really don't have much um, this month in terms of rate decisions um, waiting um, that could affect this pair so what we really have at the moment is the um, issue of bring this back a second you can see that there is no uh, interest rate decision in November for the RBNZ for New Zealand and that on the 5th of November we had the Bank of, uh, the Bank of England rate decision the Federal Reserve has no rate decision in November so from this point of view and there's also no ECB rate decision from this point of view we don't have the big drivers for the FX world for this particular pair and we know that the, the big movers have been certainly this year not only this year but uh, monetary policy has been a big driver for Japan certainly, uh, for for the UK and uh, for the United States and also for New Zealand. So we have all these different situations that are uh, affecting the value of currencies and also the movement of currencies um, regardless of value because let's bear in mind that the Kiwi is one of the, the, what, the highest yielding currency of all the major G10 currencies um, and yet it, it is being punished because going forward um, the Royal Bank of New Zealand is acting uh, and delivering a rhetoric that says to the markets we want this currency to be devalued okay so the markets they are taking advantage of that obviously um, although buying the Kiwi dollar versus the US dollar for example would make a lot of sense in terms of return over time because of the interest rate and high rollover interest paid in swaps but really that doesn't um, concern markets going forward obviously the the US dollar and the the size of the economy behind it compared to the size of the economy of New Zealand is obviously much more appealing in terms of buying dollar um, going forward so buying the dollar obviously means selling the euro, which can go certainly has a lot of room going further down. Um, it means selling the pound possibly, although that's a difficult relationship because the pound is also trying to uh, go towards an interest rate rise. Um, and then obviously the Kiwi US dollar is kind of quite clear relationship of one moving up, one moving down. So we have this disparity of, of the two. Now, in terms of this particular pair, the uh, pound is where it is. We see this line that I've drawn just earlier preparing this video is the 2.30 line in orange. You can see it there. So the 2.30 is a very strong level, whether you're below it or above it. And I say that because looking back, you can see a lot of interaction here. You see a lot of interaction here from early October. So it's been a month, really, since we started trying to get above this level once it got below it. This correction here starting at the uh, last week of uh, September took us down in less than a month to from 2.45 down to 2.30 and eventually 2.25. Okay, so it's 2,000 pips basically within a month. That was quite remarkable, quite remarkable indeed. And uh, we've now come above the 230 again, and quite convincingly, because these, these are sort of daily candles, so there's plenty of scope 
terms of movement. And this big candle here, which came on a day that the Bank of England said, no, inter no interest rate rise, we're not interested, etc. You can see that in spite of the red candle, we've come down and right square on that 230, so we haven't really broken it. So again, that's an encouraging sign that whereas here on the 28th of October, we didn't actually manage to break above that in spite of this big candle here. Uh, so we're now above the 230 and the overall space that we have above going forward is quite remarkable. If you think as well that the, um, okay, this is the 200 day moving average. So we're above it. Okay. We're not broken below it. And if we added the, uh, 100 day moving average, okay. Let's put it on. Because I had it on and took it off to show you just the chart by itself. We'll put it back on. And that should give us a clear indication of that. Okay, so that's where we're at at the moment. This is the 100 day moving average. Uh, it's a 100 period moving average on a day chart that makes it the 100 day moving average. So we are below it. Sure enough, we broke below it here in early October. Okay. So it's been about a month, essentially, that we've been below it. But we've uh, bounced off as 2.25, 2.25, and we've broken above 2.30. So the 100-day the moving average is just under the 2.35 level at the moment. And we're at 2.31 something. So we're about 300 odd pips from it. And this is not particularly a wide level because if we added the average true range for this pair, you'll see that at the moment, the average true range is at zero, it's 298, okay. So we're about 300 pips per day. So if you do your calculations, if we are at 2.3150 at the moment, and that's 2.35, okay, that's 350 points. So we could cover that, we could cover that in a day at the moment, quite comfortably, okay? So that means obviously that if we can cover it in a day, we can also surpass it in a day and a half, or two days. That means by the end of the week, we could be above the 100 day moving average. Let's think about that for a moment because this is, okay, this is an average. So it does change shape over time. It doesn't stay in the same way. And it smooths out with time as values get recalculated. But certainly if you look at here, you can see that it didn't take long to get above this and stay above it. And here it didn't take long to break below it. So there wasn't a lot of interaction backwards and forwards there. There wasn't a lot of interaction backwards and forwards here. There was a bit more of interaction above and below the 100 day moving average there. And certainly there was a lot of that here. Okay. That was the end of last year. So if we squeeze that, you'll see that it's a lot choppier around here. Here's much more clear cut. We're just below it. But we're starting to rise, and if you look at the four hour chart, you can see this quite clearly. Okay. You see there's a sort of trend developing going up. And so that means that we have the potential to move up. Let's look at the uh, Kiwi US dollar, and I'll give you the daily again. We look at the volume because we don't have that available on FXCM for the pound Kiwi. You can see the volume. Okay. So the buying volume has obviously been strong at these levels, but it's sort of come off and we've met resistance at 69, 68. And after the non-farm payrolls day on Friday last week, there's not been really much going on in terms of buying. There's just been selling, strong selling of that. So, and we don't particularly have any, anything that supports the Kiwi economy at the moment or the, or the dollar. That is the end of our video, so um, keep your eyes peeled for the next video and uh, good luck trading.